What's up everyone? I'm Melissa Elise and you're watching Melissa Elise TV. Welcome to my Billion Season 3 Episode 7 review, Not You Mr. Dake. This may have been the best episode of the entire series and here's why. First off, as an overview to the episode as a whole, they used a non-linear format to the story, which isn't unusual. Billions has been using flashback storytelling since season one, and very well I might add. But this one was so in and out of the past and present bits, yet surprisingly coherent, and it worked really well in building the tension and the suspense, especially in the court sequence. Despite the multiple perspectives of Axe, Chuck, Wendy, Miffy, Brian, the return of Hall, and a little Taylor in there too, everything fell into place perfectly. Of course, coming into episode 7, I expected to find out Chuck, Wendy, and Axe's plan to get out of this mess, with the main question being who could they pin it on? And we get that answered almost immediately with Chuck talking to the doctor out front of his house. I had my doubts for all of two seconds, so if I could give Chuck a compliment, it would be that he knows how to play somebody. Convincing the doctor that they would take down Axe together. And I almost felt bad for him when I realized he was the scapegoat. But then I felt immediately better watching Chuck and Axe plan out their next move together. I'm pretty sure I got actual goosebumps watching these two masterminds work together and actually agree on how best to protect Wendy. But I love that she knows exactly how they work and was prepared for the scapegoat plan. So Chuck has to deal with framing the doctor with the ice juice slide and getting him to confess guilt. Though it's not really his involvement in the ice juice scandal that Chuck is after. He drags up the ghost of Donnie Khan, which clearly already haunts the doctor, and convinces him to take a plea deal, giving him five years in jail. Meanwhile, Axe is responsible for making it look like the doc did profit from the ice juice short and getting access to Wendy's cell phone provider system to change the cell record. And this is where the new halls came up short, driving Axe back to his old buddy, the real Hall, who does come out of hiding to employ his uniquely creepy set of skills. But that still leaves Mephi, and I guess no one thought it would go over well to just ask him to protect Axe and Wendy, except Wags. Though Taylor makes it clear that he would do anything for his friends if he felt it right and necessary. So Wendy is deployed to play on McPhee's more than friendly feelings towards her. And Taylor takes a disliking to this and I guess tries to step to her. But I think they have the power dynamic confused in this situation. As if Wendy was even going to ask him to jump out the window. But they gave it their best shot. It's a good thing that they brought him in when they did though, because the FBI had already had their run at Mephi. But when it was made clear that things would be really, really bad for Wendy, Mephi steps up and takes responsibility for calling her and giving her the information on the ice juice short. So everyone's done their part, but they still have to wait and see how it unfolds in court much to Brian and Dake's surprise. They both start the day out pretty confident, and Brian is practically showing off, but only hinting at what he thinks he has on Axe, Chuck, and Wendy, and how he's gonna bust the whole conspiracy wide open. And this week was another brilliant performance by Rob Morrow, though I will say the writers might have gotten a little carried away with his judge monologue. But poor Brian, he was so excited too. Unfortunately, he finds out about Mephi's confession and his whole case goes up in smoke. The AG has to step in and makes the final decision of who's off the hook, freeing Axe, Wendy, and of course Chuck, leaving Chuck to prosecute the doctor. And he sends Brian back to the Southern District and fires Dake. But before any celebrations can begin, Axe pays one hefty fine for himself and then Miffy's. And Wendy kisses Miffy to some pretty epic music. So it's all over and everyone made it out okay, except Brian and Dake. But all seems forgiven between Chuck and his dad and Wags throws Axe a party to celebrate, but no one really seems in the mood to celebrate. I think it has to do with what Chuck says to his dad about the wins costing more. 
it looks like Axe feels the same way in the end. I think that's what they should have named this episode, The Winds Cost More, because the whole date thing was kind of obscure. Anyway, this was still a fantastic episode, though I do think it's a little early in the season for them to be here. They still have five episodes to go. So how is this season going to end? Any guesses? Let me know in the comments section. That's it for me, but thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next week. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more episode reviews.